So what is a network and how do we define how we communicate across them? Uh, that's, that's what we're going to talk about now. So what we have here are two uh, wonderful computers that I've drawn. <laughs> um, and we're going to define how do we how do we talk from one to the other? Uh, do we use you know a straight copper network cable? Do we use uh, a fiber optic cable? Uh, do we use something different? Do we use uh, wireless? Networks need to define how they communicate from one side to the other. Uh, they define who the sender and the receivers are. So, you know, this might be the sender, this might be the receiver, uh, or vice versa. Uh, what method do we use to communicate across that media? Um, do I send all of my data in one big chunk? Do I break it up into little bits? Uh, how big are those bits? Uh, what language do I use to talk to you uh, across that connection? What, uh, what speed do I do so? Uh, you know, if I'm sending it across this connection, uh, that might be a lot slower than if I were to use this, this connection. Uh, the definitions of the network media and the network protocols that we use uh, define how fast that communication happens. What size packets do we send or frames do we send? Uh, or uh, what language do we use? Do we send an acknowledgement? If, uh, if the sender sends his data over to the receiver, does the receiver then say, oh yeah, I got that. I'm going to acknowledge. Uh, or does that just happen uh, and there is no acknowledgement? Uh, sometimes it's preferable not to do that. Sometimes it's preferable to do that depending on what media and what application and what transport method you're using. Um, what kind of quality do we need? If we are part of a larger network, uh, do we need to define uh, application A and application B differently? Uh, you know, let's say this is uh, a video stream. Does this need to have a different quality when it gets sent than application B which is uh, financial transactions that are part of a spreadsheet. Uh, you may need to define a different level of quality for those. Um, how often do we retransmit if there's a problem, if something happens on this connection? Uh, so let's say this connection, uh, there's some sort of problem and both of us try to talk at the same time. What happens at that point? The, the network needs to have some sort of defined method to, to handle that. Uh, do we both try to retransmit immediately? Does one side wait uh, for a second to, to see if the other side is going to transmit? Uh, there's things like uh, back off timers and hold downs and things like that that we need to uh, determine whether or not we're going to use. Uh, reliability, if, uh, if a connection is not as reliable such as this wireless connection we have here, if this uh, is not as a reliable connection, do we have a process put in place, depending on what protocol we're using, where we may choose a different connection because it's a higher quality connection? Uh, that all needs to be considered and uh, as part of our network and part of our um, choice of protocols and what's defined within the protocols and the applications we're using and all things like that. They all need to define these different variables. Uh, some things that we may use. Uh, let's get rid of some of this stuff. There we go. Uh, so we have our two computers and they've got a wired connection and a wireless connection. Uh, some of the different rules that I've mentioned, uh, different protocols uh, that they could be. Uh, so for example, I mentioned um, video connections. Those could be over um, X264. They could be uh, like um, an MPEG file. They could be something like that. Uh, that might go over a certain protocol or if you're if you're chatting to somebody for example so you could do video chatting or, or, or text chatting or something like that that might be uh, a certain protocol um, if you're sending email so uh, let's say uh, the sender is uh, your computer and the receiver is the server so this is this is you and this is the server 
you might be using a protocol called POP and the server might be using a protocol called SMTP. Uh, if you want to retrieve your mailbox, you'll use POP to then go talk to the server and retrieve your emails. If the server uh, has received an email from you where you want to send it to somebody, the server will then use a different protocol called SMTP to then send that off to the internet to some other server to get it to its destination. Um, I mentioned chatting. You could use uh, protocols such as uh, XMPP or uh, Oscar, uh, some of the old uh, instant messaging protocols. Uh, if you're at the left hand side and the right hand side is a uh, server or a switch or something like that and you want to administer it, you might communicate to it using Telnet. You might communicate to it using SSH. All these are different protocols that you can use uh, that have different definitions. So the definitions of Telnet are different from the definitions of SSH. One is insecure, one is secure. One has more steps involved in it. Um, if you are sending your iOS files, as I mentioned, from your computer to your switch, uh, you might use something called TFTP, which is different from FTP. Uh, one of these has acknowledgments, one of these does not. One of them uses TCP, one of them uses UDP. And we'll learn about all these different things. Uh, and we have, we have protocols on top of protocols on top of protocols. And each one has a different uh, set of definitions to handle whatever uh, piece of the network or layer of the network we'll get into uh, than the other. Uh, I mentioned wired and wireless. Uh, your network might be wired with copper. Uh, we call it Cat5e or Cat6 or Cat7 now, uh, which is the category of the quality of the cable. Uh, you also have wireless, so you might be using uh, wireless. Uh, you might be you might think of it as wireless N uh, 802.11n, or you might be using the older kind uh, G or B or even A. <laughs> Hopefully not A, but um, you have different varieties of, of protocols for wireless communications. If you're sending from one building to another, there's an even a different series of wireless protocols that you can use. Uh, or if you're sending long distances, there's WiMAX and things like that that you can uh, use to transmit over many miles, uh, not just from one building to another or within your own home. Uh, there's different devices that are part of a network. We, I mentioned uh, we have two, two computers here. You might have your computer and a server. You might have uh, your computer and a bunch of switches. Um, there's a bunch of different devices out there that are part of a network that help it operate. Some of those are easily identified. Uh, if we do, we'll see later, we'll do a trace route. You'll easy, more easily be able to see routers than you will switches. Uh, and you'll be able to know uh, what servers you're connected to and uh, who else is on your network. Um, those, all those devices are part of your network and help it operate and you have different ways of seeing them and knowing that what, you know, which ones are where. Uh, all these different protocols also have different definitions of based on what layer of the OSI model, which we'll get into, uh, they'll have different definitions of uh, how they break up their data. So I mentioned, you know, do I send all my data at one time or do I send it in little pieces? If I send it in little pieces, that do I break that up into segments or packets or frames? I'll write these down. Segments. And we'll go into these in more detail as well. Of course. We have packets and we have frames. Uh, and depending on what layer of the OSI model we're talking about, uh, it may break it into different sizes and have different rules on what size that is, and um, you know what heading information I wrap it with and encode it with and encapsulate it and all sorts of things like that. Those are all defined by these protocols. So you might be using uh, a protocol that breaks things into segments, uh, and then you have something that breaks it into packets 
and then you have something that breaks it into frames, um, which I didn't write one up there, but you, uh, you have all these different layers and and definitions that interoperate within your network that help it help it work. Uh, this is important, even more important to learn than it used to be because we have all these different protocols now working on one network. Everything is converged, is what we call it. So before we had, um, let me clear off some of this. Get a little bit more room. There we go. Uh, we may have uh, a phone or something like that. So we'll draw a phone here. Off your computer, if you're at a business, you may have some sort of a uh, telephone. That now operates across the same network as your data. And then, you know, Bob over here may have a phone as well on that same network. This voice traffic... goes across the same network as your data traffic what, that you're communicating with your email and your POP and your FTP and your web browsing and your Telnet and SSH and all these things. They'll be communicating across the same network. Uh, you also have uh, video streaming. You're watching things across YouTube or you're doing a video conference uh, from a conference room uh, between two locations. That all traverses the same network. Uh, it's important to learn these protocols and learn what's inside your network uh, so you understand what is all communicating across it because as time goes on more and more uh, different protocols and devices and, and things that didn't used to be as one network are now being joined into one network we even have power now going across these networks we have power over ethernet that we'll go into some devices such as wireless access points and these phones that I'm drawing uh, they can be powered over elec using electricity over the same data cables that you're using to send the data and the voice and the video and everything else. Uh, this is all across your network, uh, especially if you're in a business. This is probably common in you know almost every medium-sized business out there. Uh, and we'll go over some of the network symbols uh, here. These are not traditional network symbols, but uh, there's certain ones that uh, we'll be using as we go forward. Uh, that you'll see and become accustomed to, such as routers are kind of like circles and switches are usually like uh, rectangles and things like that. And you'll see that when we use GNS or Packet Tracer, there'll they'll be specific symbols that we'll use. Um, you'll notice that I drew the, um, the Ethernet cable here, this copper cable with a black solid line. There's a reason for that that we'll go into. Uh, if you have a wide area connection, there might be a red lightning bolt looking icon. You'll see all these as we go through. Uh, there's ways to notate what you s find in your network to make it more easily digestible as you uh, go back to it in the future or share it with somebody else. There's standardized web methods of doing that. Uh, so from here we're going to not just talk about networks but we're going to be talking about the internet and how the internet came to be. So we have these local networks that we're talking about here but how do we get these local networks with all these protocols and all these rules and all these different media types how do they then talk to somebody through say SMTP out to the mysterious internet where did the internet come from how do we communicate across the internet um, that's where we're going to be going next